Welcome to Movie Shortens. Follow us today to a 1969 French-Italian movie called Hibernatus. Before we start, be aware, there are spoilers. As we open to the movie, there are explosions in the snow. From a distance, a small group of people watch a man dressed in furs approach the crater. He calls the group over and they all look over the edge. Buried in the snow, they find a pair of feet poking out. They manage to extract a block of ice containing the body. The news reports that the expedition is in Greenland and that the body has been perfectly preserved. The remains of a French steamer lost in 1905 is found the next day. The shoes date from the same time as the shipwreck, so there is no doubt that the man has been imprisoned in the ice for 65 years. The encased body is taken by helicopter to the hospital. A press conference is held by Professor Loribat, an expert in artificial hibernation. With Professor Bibellini, he announces that they have thawed the body and detected some cardiac activity, and the crowd gasps in awe. The ship was transporting glycerin, and he speculates that when the ship struck the iceberg, the man was covered in glycerin and instantly frozen. Hubert and his wife, Edmi, are astounded by this event. Hubert is the president of the French packaging company. He gives a motivational speech to his employees and tells the attendees that he follows the example of Mr. Crepang Jajar, another French packaging mogul. He announces the engagement of Mr. Crepang Jajar's daughter, Evelyn, to his son, Didier. The crowd cheers as Mr. Crepang Jajar begins to give a long toast. Suddenly, Hubert notices that almost everyone is wearing a red pin in their lapel, signifying membership of the Legion of Honor. He asks a counselor when he will receive his pin, and he is told that it is on its way. He tries to take it from the counselor's lapel, but is interrupted by Mr. Crepin Jajar, who congratulates him on the refurbishment and assures them that their families will do great things together. They discuss the frozen body, and Hubert says that he feels sorry for the 25-year-old stuck in an old body. They laugh that if the man had grandchildren, then they would be their age. Suddenly, they are interrupted by Sophie, the maid who tells them that the police are there. Hubert rushes to speak to him, and the policeman hands him a note, inviting him to meet the general secretary. As he awaits his commendation, the general secretary asks him about the Iceman, who it turns out is Edmi's grandfather, named Paul Fonnier. The general secretary is thrilled that if the Iceman survives, then France can lay claim to the greatest discovery of all time, survival. Hubert returns home and demands that Edmi tell him about her grandfather. She says that he is dead and buried. They go to the cemetery to look for the grave, but when they cannot find his gravestone, Hubert reveals to Edmi that his grandfather has been buried in ice for 65 years. Edmi returns home and interrupts Sophie and Didier. She tells them that she is excited to meet her grandfather. Hubert, meanwhile, has been looking at old photographs and presenting a picture to Didier. Hubert and Edmi leave for the hospital but encounter an old man at the gate who claims to be Paul's oldest friend. At the hospital, Professor Loribat warns them that the slightest upset could affect Paul's mental well-being. He still thinks that it is 1905 and he has changed somewhat. Edmi is sure that her heart will recognize him. The door is open and Paul is revealed. Edmi screams that the monster is not her relative. The surgeons wanted to wait before they shaved him and so now they get to work. Professor Loribat informs Edmi that he only remembers snatches of his family wife before his marriage. They told him that he fell off a horse. As Paul is shaved, he is revealed to be the man in the photograph. Later, Edmi insists that he should go home with them, but everyone else believes that he belongs to science. Edmi says that she doesn't care and says that the best place for him is surrounded by his family. Didier discusses his great-grandfather with Evelyn. He is astounded that his great-grandfather is the same age as him. Hubert bursts in and apologizes for the interruption, but encourages Didier to enjoy some time with Evelyn. He returns to Edmi and complains that Didier is taking too long with Evelyn. He asks her to sign a check, but she refuses to do so until she has her grandfather at home with her, and until then, he must sleep in the guest room. Suddenly, the counselor calls and informs Hubert that the company still belongs to Paul. Hubert runs to his wife and tells her that he agrees. Her grandfather should be with his family. He goes to the hospital, but they refuse to release him. Back at home, Hubert receives a visit from Professor Bibellini, who assures him that Paul 
should be recovering in a familial environment. Professor Loribat plans to have Paul removed tomorrow, but Bibellini cannot act without Hubert's help. Hubert agrees. The body is loaded onto a plane. Bibellini has Loribat sedated, and they swap Loribat's body with Paul's. When the plane lands, Loribat is taken away, and then Hubert and Edmi arrive to take Paul. Edmi laughs hysterically as they load him into an ambulance and drive away, pausing only to collect Professor Bibellini. Later, Professor Loribat wakes up confused, and the doctors tell him that he fell off a horse. He struggles to escape, and the mistake is realized. Meanwhile, the ambulance is spotted by a helicopter that follows them. A vicar approaches, and Hubert bundles him into the ambulance. They plan to take Paul to the church, as he figures that churches look the same, and he will not be disoriented. They arrive at a thoroughly modern church, and Hubert decides to try again, leaving the vicar at the roadside. They arrive at a 15th century abbey and wheel Paul inside. They are followed by the police, but the monks will not let Loribat inside. He uses a megaphone to tell them that they have 15 minutes to surrender Paul to him. A monk tells Hubert that because they have brought Paul safely there, it is a sign from God that he should remain with them. Hubert swears, and Paul wakes and sits bolt upright. Hubert sings to put him back to sleep. Professor Loribat decides to enter the abbey alone. Hubert disguises himself as a monk and joins a procession. He gathers more robes and they carry Paul's body out. Suddenly, they notice Lori Batten huddle together. Lori Bat approaches and Bibellini suddenly cracks up. Paul drops to the floor and awakens to the face of Edmi. He believes her to be his mother and she goes along with the deceit. He asks to go home and Lori Bat reluctantly agrees. At the hospital, Lori Bat instructs Hubert to return his mansion to the state it was during the 1900s. Hubert is angry because he has just finished the modernization and suggests that they tell Paul the year. Lori Bat insists that it will kill him. Edmi insists that her grandfather is coming to live with them, but Hubert refuses to agree to the refurbishment. The general secretary manages to convince him by covering the expenses, and Lori Bat informs the press of all the changes happening to the house and the area. Sophie is watching Paul as he wakes and looks around the room. He asks why all the changes and starts to flirt with her. He starts to kiss her hand and asks for his breakfast. Sophie runs to Edmi to inform her that Paul is awake and tells Didier that Paul talked to her with his hands. Didier is disgusted. Edmi resembles Paul's mother and they greet each other. Hubert enters disguised as his father, but Paul throws him out, declaring him to be a seducer. In the garden, Hubert encounters Paul's old friend, who believes him to be Paul's father, and berates him for running off with an actress. Hubert reveals himself, and the old man apologizes. In the bedroom, Paul tells Edmi that they will go out for dinner. The professors forbid this, and Paul dismisses them. Edmi assures them that she will keep him indoors. As they leave, they prevent Hubert from returning to the house, and have the police take him away. Didier runs down the stairs and tells his mother what has happened. Edmi dismisses him as a student that rents a room in the house. And when Sophie states that she finds Paul cuter than Didier, Didier says that he is not impressed with Paul and walks away. Paul says that he will throw him out tomorrow, but Edmi begs him not to. She calls him grandfather by accident, and he thinks that she is mocking him. He suggests that she should find herself a new husband, and she introduces him to Hubert, now out of his disguise. Paul welcomes him, and then they speak privately. Paul understands that Hubert is a widower and asks how his wife died. Hubert cooks up a story about her exploding everywhere. Paul reveals that he plans to take over the management of the factory that was left to him by his father. Hubert is angered by this sudden turn of events. Evelyn and her parents are on their way to the house in a horse-drawn carriage. Paul watches Hubert and Edmi courting on the swing. Hubert insists that Edmi tell him the truth or he'll ruin the business. He pushes the swing hard, and Edmi falls just as the Crepin Jajars enter. They stand up to greet the arrivals, but Hubert rushes Edmi away as she has ripped her dress. The Crepin Jajar believe them to be so in love and tell Evelyn that if Didier is the same, then she is lucky. Inside, Didier is kissing Sophie, but the butler tells Hubert. Hubert bursts in and removes Sophie. He threatens to dock her wages, but she says that Paul is her boss now. Didier says that Hubert can stick the fake marriage to Evelyn, but Hubert sends him downstairs regardless. Meanwhile, Paul is in the garden flirting with Evelyn, 
Hubert finds him on the swing and returns inside in a state of shock. That evening, Hubert tells Edmie that he will not allow her grandfather to steal his son's fiance. He starts to undress, but Edmie worries that they will be caught sharing a bed out of wedlock. Hubert sneaks back into the bedroom after Paul has gone to bed, but early the next morning, Paul knocks on Edmie's bedroom door with the poem he has written for Evelyn. Hubert hides under the bed as Edmie tries to tell Paul that Evelyn is already promised to another. Paul threatens to kill the other man. He leaves the room and Hubert resolves to nip this affair in the bud. Paul asks the butler to deliver his poem to Evelyn, but Hubert intercepts and gives the poem to Didier. He later recites it to Evelyn, but Paul dramatically jumps through the window, accusing Didier of stealing his poem. Evelyn slaps Didier for the deceit, and he reveals to Paul that she is his fiance. Didier returns to his mother, fuming. Hubert walks in and tells Edmi that he is going to tell Paul the truth. Edmi tries to stop him, but Hubert tells Paul everything and also gives a potted history of the advancement of the last 65 years. Hubert rants as Professor Lorimat walks in. Paul assures him that he feels fine, but thinks that Hubert is mad. Hubert tries to show Paul proof, but he runs out of the house chased by the others. Paul finds a key and opens a cupboard containing the television. His eyes widen as he watches the images. Evelyn approaches and he realizes that it was all true. She asks if he could get used to living in their time, but he isn't sure. They run outside together and he encounters his old friend. They nod in recognition. Sometime later, Paul and Evelyn are getting married. Edmi runs to the church, claiming that she cannot find Hubert. Lori Matt and Bibellini hand her a note from Hubert, telling her that he will meet her in 50 years. They take her to the hospital, where he has been frozen in a block of ice. Like and subscribe for more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.